that india always fails in narratives like it has it has very good thought process it has very good policy so do you think that we are failing in projecting our ideas or projecting our laws to the local uh, the domestic population do you think that india should work more on its pr both locally and internationally i would be hesitant uh, to uh, make a blanket statement about the failure on the narrative front we have succeeded for example uh, the article 370s uh, removal in jammu and kashmir there was an apprehension that there could be a mobilization of international community against that but that did not happen even domestically sir uh, for example the campaign for swachh bharat abhiyan or the campaign for to give it give the lpg subsidy up have been tremendously successful campaigns uh, which were national narratives to rise above uh, narrow uh, mindsets and narrow interests and think about the nation's growth first so we have been successful in that regard uh, of course you will not going to win every battle and it's always a work in progress so any improvement in our pr strategy would always be welcome so can you tell me uh, one or two points uh, which are very uh, effective in taking the indian economy forward like we have lots of goals and all lots of aspirations uh, but can you tell me two suggestions like how to take the indian economy forward in the next 5 to 10 years so the first thing in my view would be to identify the sectors which are the closest to our existing competencies coming from mm-hmm. punjab i would want us to focus as an uh, uh, green state and a uh, lot of our uh, uh, laborers in agriculture sector focus on uh, food processing industries where we can export for example to middle eastern nations south east asian nations and even the western markets as branded agricultural products so building on our existing competencies in the automobile sector as well uh, uh we are good at automobiles export but we are still importing a lot of automobile components i believe around 17 to 18 billion dollars worth of components uh so branching out from our existing competency similarly with the uh, area of mobile manufacturing we can move to towards higher value addition in mobiles so uh, which is something that the present ali scheme is doing as well identifying the core competencies the drug issue which is we see which is more prevalent in this belt punjab haryana the drug issue can you tell me why this culture is more prevalent don't give me the geographical reasons but give me the socio economic and political reasons for this drug problem prevalent in this part of india uh, so one social reason that i would highlight is there was uh, a higher acceptance of intoxicants in punjabi culture compared to the rest of the nation for example i had a friend in college uh, from odisha and he told me that in uh, marriages in odisha you uh, the male members of household if they want to have a drink they would do it behind closed doors but in punjab you have open bars in marriages that just tells you something about that and there's also a, 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 a more commonly used uh, opium is more commonly used a female is more commonly used in punjab now the degree of that use can shift uh, if there's increasing influx of particular drugs or some other changes in uh, the socio economic characteristics which happened in punjab with the stagnating economy uh, so you have higher unemployment uh, the youth of punjab are unfortunately not engaged in productive activities and if you combine that with the kind of glorification that drugs have in for example the music industry the film industry that does lead the youth astray and increases the uh, the use of drugs uh, amongst the punjabi population So you worked as a PST center for uh, all sensors for two yes, years. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What do you do? What do you do? Uh, so, uh, so I was attached with a larger project. Uh, the goal of the project was to uh, identify how should India prioritize its R and D investments. Which type of projects should we fund? So in that, my role was to first map out uh, the Indian R and D output. what is the scientific uh, community publishing and compare it with the international community so i developed uh, uh, the backend system uh, uh, which uh, input all the research papers that were published by indian scientists over time it analyzed the abstracts of those papers and it categorized them uh, into which field did they belong to so uh, through my system you could put in a query say for example what is the research being carried out on beet on paddy on electric vehicles on some disease uh where that research is being carried you would get that output uh, what does the change in that research uh, importance over the last few years and how does that compare with international research clusters so it solves two or three problems uh, mainly 
first uh, we identify where we are was these are we international research community are the focus areas different and should we try to get uh, one of their research areas as well secondly many researchers are not aware that they are working on similar areas in different geographies so we can actually bring those research groups together and improve the efficiency of the system thirdly india is trying to promote interdisciplinary, uh, interdisciplinary research in a big way and that can happen if we actually identify these are the research areas which are close to each other and we can put those research groups in connection with each other so uh, these are the three basic areas where my research would be useful in designing a more uh, effective r and d funding mechanism okay. so you know you learn many things in this research so india has been spending a lot of money if not a lot of money but sufficient amount of money in r and d the last seven decades of what are the main problems why it has not been producing more uh, research papers or more ips um so first with due respect uh, i would like to highlight that india's r and d's expenditure is still only 0.6 to 0.7% of gdp while nations like us china are over 2% and even at comparable development stages their china for example invested more in its uh, r and d than india does at comparable stages of development uh one big reason is that private sector unfortunately has not been a big participant in india's r and d story even for example in it sector for the longest time we were regarded as the work horses for the it industry not much original research was happening uh, there has been an unfortunate uh, uh, unfortunately industry and academia have not come together in a fruitful partnership there is not sufficient commercialization of research emerging from academia there is not a focus on patenting on product design and making the research more practically usable uh, in uh, an economy in society so that focus uh, has been lacking that has both due to the policies of for example there are many more constraints in commercialization of research from government research institutes or uh, public universities than there are in western universities we have also been unsuccessful in attracting and retaining highest quality talent uh, one of the biggest reasons being uh, remuneration there's a big difference for example in the salaries at us uh, university pay and indian university pay the facilities also research is essentially a uh, trial and error you are going to fail many times before you actually succeed in developing something new and that requires a, a more flexible and a more liberal uh, allocation of funds by uh, anecdotally sir i uh, my friends who did some research in iit and during the graduation and did the post graduation in the us they tell me th- about being uh, there that it's much less stressful in us to ask for extra funds for like more testing for example or more experiments than it was in india it takes much more time to procure equipment and it also requires much more justification to procure the same funds indian foreign services your second option yes sir indian foreign yes sir. what can be the india's role in solving the present sri lankan crisis though that sri lankan there is a crisis yes sir yes, how sir. india can respond Do you think India has uh, responsibility in this crisis? Yes, sir. We see ourselves as net security providers in the region, and Sri Lanka faces a, a, a severe economic crisis, which uh, impacts its society, its economy, of course, and its national security as well. So we have a huge role to play. We have already extended a billion-dollar line of credit to procure essential uh, goods. You know, there's a shortage of food grains. There's a shortage of milk uh, in Sri Lanka. Uh, Sri Lanka is asking for additional 1.5 billion line of credit, uh, 1.5 billion dollars line of credit, uh, which is a proposal which can be considered. Uh, secondly, sir, we can also assist Sri Lanka in uh, gaining finance from multilateral institutions like IMF. India, uh, as a major uh, international player, can use its both its technical expertise and its uh, connections at in the international community to make those terms uh, for the for the loans to be easier for Sri Lanka. uh number 3 uh china uh, sri lanka owes a huge part of its debt to china uh, which has still not restructured sri lanka's debt despite uh, uh many requests so uh it would be uh, it would be great if india could help sri lanka reduce its dependence on chinese debt and that would also help india in mitigating chinese threat in the indian ocean